media or vehicles or agents, whatever you want, within decision makers trying to coordinate their control. So I've got a, a model here, of course, in a state space form with a disturbance input. And I have a collection of measurements. So each spacecraft gets to measure some things. In this problem, those measurements are the relative positions to some other spacecraft. Not necessarily all of them, but we can write down this vector of measurements. And with each spacecraft, there's a C matrix. And X here is the full formation state. In this case, that's everybody's positions and velocities. Where are all your spacecraft? How are they moving? So that's a very big vector of positions and velocities that are going on there. Now, each spacecraft can move its own position and velocity. It can apply some forces and move around uh, in there. And so you, is there an actuation? It's divided also up amongst the end spacecraft. Now, the interesting thing about relative coordinates here is that if I, I said the model was 1 over S squared, so you would think that the A matrix would just be 1 over S squared down the diagonal. And in absolute coordinates, that's true. But in absolute coordinates, we, can't, we don't know the centroid position or its velocity. We can't measure that from relative measurements. So we have to remove that from the problem. And when we do, A becomes a full matrix. So we can't assume any particular structure. So everything from this point on, A is just going to be a matrix. It's the state space representation for the whole system. OK, here's the philosophy. I'm going to create an estimator on every spacecraft, and it's going to attempt to estimate everyone else's position and velocity. So if you think about this room, I'm going to sit here and try and track where all of you are and where you're moving. So that's the idea. And suppose if I had the information of where everybody was, then I'd have a controlled algorithm for positioning where I should stand in there. So let's say my control algorithm, or one might be U1, is some vector K times X. K can be designed any way you like. It could be your favorite, it could be an LQG, H infinity, many, many ways of designing K. But let's say you've got some K optimal in some sense if you want. It tells you how you should move your spacecraft if you knew everything. So this is the centralized control problem. If I have complete information, this is my objective. Now you can think of each row of K is telling the first rows tell U1, first agent what to do, all the way down to UN. These, those are just parts of that same uh, matrix. So what I want to do then is say spacecraft 1 has an estimator. So it has an update, the plus means the next time step, depends on its measurements, and some communicated signals, in this case from spacecraft 3, and its control action is just the first rows of this matrix K. Um, and it's based on its estimator. So this is a standard sort of certainty equivalence approach. This is how you design uh, control systems in your final year as an undergraduate. You form an estimator, you come and filter, you get the estimate of the state, and then you apply your state feedback to that estimate. We're doing exactly the same thing, except now we're going to have multiple estimators applying their own state feedback to it but they're all estimating the same thing. Everyone is trying to estimate everything. So this is a, um, there's a lot of information going on in this, this problem. And the issue is that the, the information is overlapping. So if there are just two of us, me and some other person, we're both trying to say estimate the distance and velocity with respect to the other persons. So we have an overlapping estimate of something, and our control is going to depend on that. But there are those, I think mean, so you say everybody does the same thing, but Every, everyone why estimates the same. Why number two as one as two, the other one as only as four? Well, uh, actually, I've just shown a, a case where the information coming in might be different. But they're, they're attempting to, this, this estimate, ideally, this estimate x2 will be the same as x1, which will be the same as x3, which will be equal to x, the real state. So that's ideally what would happen. You are also assuming that they are all symmetric relationships, right? No, no, there's no assumption of symmetry at all. See, or one, two, three are identical. No, no, they, they don't have to be at all. They, then it's okay if I, if I estimate you, you estimate me, the answer will be different. Yeah, this is the point. This is, what I'm, this is what I'm going to say is confusion. The fact that we have, we're going to have different estimates of the same things. And uh, it's those different estimates that are going to arrange oh, some very strange dynamics in the system. But yeah, the, the point is that everyone is trying to estimate the same thing, but they have a different estimate. So, well, I think you are disagrees with what you think you are. So, it's uh, 
there are, there are multiple levels in here, but that disagreement, the thing that we don't agree on, is going to be critical to that. And here we potentially disagree in everything. We're both trying to estimate everything that's going on, and we could easily have different estimates of that. Okay, so um, let me just talk about some of these uh, advantages here. So if everyone estimates everything, then you can calculate, because you know the control games, you can calculate your control action, because that's a function of where everyone else is and where they're moving. So you can calculate where you, what you should be doing. But you can also predict what everyone else is going to do. Because you have an estimate of the state, and their control depends on that state, and you know their control algorithm. This is a cooperative problem. So you can do higher level functions here. Because you can predict what everyone else is about to do, you can do collision avoidance, retargeting, the various things that, which we normally think in a hierarchy some supervisor would do. You have enough information on each spacecraft to perform those functions. And that really reduces the autonomy. Uh, and for the spacecraft problem, that's a valuable thing. It also increases the redundancy, because the information is duplicated on all the spacecraft. We're all trying to estimate this uh, formation. And so, we have duplicate estimates. If some spacecraft suddenly fails, the estimate on that is lost, but everyone is trying to estimate the same thing, so we don't uh, lose our own copies. The disadvantage here is we need a lot of computation on each vehicle. Now, in spacecraft problems, computation is cheap compared to sensing and communication. Those are expensive. That might not be true if you're trying to do a low power, low cost sensor network, then you might not want to be trying to estimate everything uh, in your universe. Okay, actually, let me give you a simple example of where this comes up. Um, so problems of uh, approaching someone in a corridor. So you're walking towards someone in a corridor, you're both walking down the middle of the corridor, you have an algorithm to not hit this other person coming towards you. And actually, depending culturally where you're brought up, it probably involves either stepping left or stepping right. Uh, so there's a, there's a potential problem there. But your algorithm, when you step one direction, you're implicitly using a prediction of what you think the other person is going to do. And you know, if you think, oh, I'm slightly more to the left of this person, so I'll go that way. If they think you're slightly more to the right, you'll go towards each other. And then, of course, you have an emergency algorithm, which will take you back the other way, so do they. And then you break into an unstable oscillation. So what this whole talk of it is, is essentially what are the dynamical equations for that unstable oscillation when you meet in a corridor. And it results from two things. One, the fact that you have a slight disagreement about your trajectories. And two, your control algorithm depends on predicting the other's control action. Now, when you have those two features, you will get the situation I'm going to describe now. And so, you can ignore the mathematics if you at least come away with that. It's the disagreement in trying to estimate the same variables that leads to this. And that's what I'm talking about, confusion, in a sense. And then when you, your control action depends on that variable, that's when the dynamics get involved, and you can get some unstable dynamics around. So let me, okay, now that I've told you what it's all about, let me at least put it in the mathematical context. So let's say we're going to use this architecture. Each vehicle has some local measurements with noise, but let's say it can communicate with some other vehicles. Some people, you know, if you went down the corridor saying, I'm going left, I'm going left, nobody's going to run into you, okay? But if you, uh, if you don't talk to someone, there's some risk. So let's say you can receive some information from some other vehicles. And the way I'm going to model the information flow is just going to be a, a matrix times the estimate. So I want to send some information to someone. I'm going to take my estimate of what I think everything is, multiply it by matrix, and send that. Now, if that's a row vector, I'm sending a single number. If it's the identity, I'm sending everything I know. It could be anything in between. But I'm going to, the colored variables here, in case you haven't noticed, they're going to be design variables when I come to a formulating a design problem. So part of the design problem will be, what should I tell everyone else about what I'm doing? Now, for my estimator update, this is very simple. If you've done some common filtering, this should look familiar. The first part, particularly, is the propagation of the state dynamics <coughs> of the closed loop. And then there's the innovations from the measurements you have. Uh, 
for the common gain to update your estimator. And now, this is the innovations that come from the information you receive. So essentially, it's um, the signal from the other spacecraft minus what I think the other spacecraft would have said if they were looking at the same information as me. So that's the innovations there. And now I put a, essentially a calm and gain on those innovations, and that's my complete update what I think everything is. So if I'm designing an estimator, I have to pick a few extra things. A local measurement gain, that's just a standard calm and filter gain, somewhat standard. I'll call this one a receiver gain. In other words, how do I integrate the information that I'm receiving from other spacecraft? And also, because I get to pick my transmitters, usually you don't have a common filter problem, I can choose transmitter gains. It could be the identity, which would be, they tell me everything, or it could be just a row of the K matrix, which means they can tell me what they're going to do. That's how they calculate U. Okay, so that's the basic structure. Now a little bit on uh, communication topology. Uh, and this, it's fairly common practice in this area to use graph theory to specify these things. So we'll use what we'll call an adjacency matrix to specify communication. So I have A, I, J, and there's a 1 if J transmits to I, and a 0 otherwise. It just says who's talking to whom in there. So think of this as your, your network of communication. Let's define another matrix called the in degree, which is a diagonal matrix, and on the diagonal is the number of signals you receive. So if five people are talking to me, that's five on my uh, diagonal. The Laplacian uh, is D minus A. And it has some nice properties. Uh, this is what's known as an unweighted Laplacian. So suppose I have four spacecraft. Uh, one talks to two, two talks to three, three talks to four. The Laplacian would have zeros on the first row because nobody's <laughs> talking to one. There's a one and a minus one on the second row because uh, number two is receiving information from number one. So it's one signal coming in, and the minus one tells me it's coming from number one. So you can form a Laplacian like this. The interesting thing of this is the eigenvalues are 0, 1, 1, 1, in that case. That'll be a little more important later. But that's how I'm just going to say who's talking to whom in my network, which spacecraft are talking to each other, or maybe this is a, a gossipy network on my, uh, you know, that I text to my friends. Someone always texts to someone else, who talks to this person, who texts to this person. So if you're thinking about uh, social dynamics, you could formulate a similar problem. Okay. Uh, now communication, when we talk to each other, we don't always get it right. So my model of communication error here is going to be, well, I'm going to choose two models to look at. The first is I'm going to have some additive noise on my received signal. So this is what is sent from the other spacecraft or person, <coughs> and this is what I received. I, let's assume I've got some noise with a known variance on that. In a digital network, a more likely thing is that there's packet loss. Packets are coming down the network, I'm receiving packets from, from some neighboring spacecraft, they either get through or they don't. So there I've got a, I'm using a, a, a Markov model for that, where basically the probability uh, of receiving a packet, which I'm designated by one, is higher if I received the previous packet. So you can just think of that, I'm now receiving packets with a certain probability, that probability depends a little bit on whether I received one before or not. So it's a reasonably standard model in communications. But the thing is, the communication's not going to be perfect,